Jesucristo, profeta, carpintero, místico, hijo de Dios, salvador y amigo. Él es conocido por muchos nombres. El nacimiento de este amado maestro que nació en Belén marcó el inicio del calendario occidental. Tan importante fue su influencia en la humanidad. El nacimiento de este hombre, que fue uno con Dios, es un evento sagrado que marca toda una era. Jesús hizo su aparición en el escenario del mundo de forma humilde. Nació de una pareja judía devota, José y María, a los que se les dio signos de su grandeza. Por la Biblia sabemos que cuando Jesús tenía 12 años, se quedó en un templo en Jerusalén para hablar y hacer preguntas a los maestros. La gente estaba asombrada por su entendimiento. Muchas fuentes dicen que Jesús fue a la India, tierra del conocimiento espiritual desde tiempo inmemorial, donde estudió con discípulos y profesores sabios. Entra después en la narrativa del Evangelio a la edad de 30 años, cuando fue bautizado por Juan el Bautista, un evento que marca el principio de su breve vida pública como maestro. Jesús enseñó el amor y el perdón de Dios a toda la gente de corazón abierto. Jesús podía hablar de las escrituras con los eruditos y las aprendió, pero en general contaba simples historias llamadas parábolas, que todos podían entender. Jesús es especialmente amado y recordado por su sacrificio. Tres días después de su crucifixión, resucitó de entre los muertos en gloria y triunfo. Para celebrar esta Navidad en el amor y la gloria de Jesús, nos gustaría presentar el siguiente extracto de la conferencia de la Maestra Suprema Ching Hai a los miembros de nuestra asociación en una reunión en Nochebuena, el 24 de diciembre de 1990, en Costa Rica. Thanks to Jesus that we have a beautiful night like this. Should read something, story 2,000 years ago, in the Bible. When Jesus was born, some people saw the light. Then suddenly there was a blaze of light, so bright. The men had to shield their eyes. And out of the brightness came the voice of God's messenger angel. Don't be afraid. I have come with good news for you and all the world. The Savior has come, God's promised King, born today in Bethlehem. You will find the baby asleep in a manger. Then the shepherds saw a great crowd of angels, all praising God. Glory to God in heaven, and peace to all who love Him on earth. When the angels had gone, and the sky was dark again, the shepherds began to talk among themselves. We must go to Bethlehem and see what happened. So we all know what had happened. A Savior was born to save the people of the world. Glory to God, glory to Jesus, glory to all His children. Amen. Now, we remember 2,000 years ago, a great being was born among ourselves. He was so great that we have no words to praise Him. Only God knows His greatness. We, the mortal, mortals, cannot understand. We can only understand when we become as great as He. Now we would often ask ourselves, why is it that Jesus was made to die so quickly when He just reached the prime of His glory, of His mission, that is to spread the message of God? But if He didn't leave the, the earth so in such a tragic way and in, in such a short time, properly His name would have been forgotten by now. 
God has made him sacrifice in this way so that the whole world will remember, so that we might treasure a messenger of God by whichever name he came. Since the ancient times, our world has always been in trouble. People always err and forget God. So God has always to send some messengers to remind us. But Jesus was the most remembered because of his greatness and also because of his uh, very short stay with us and the way he has left us and resurrected. Now we will say the great son of God, he had great power and so much miracles. Why doesn't he change his destiny? Why he has to die in such a tragic way? But he must, he must do it. Otherwise, we are not shocked out of our sleep. We will think the world is forever. <laughs> our master is forever. Because there was also some other masters before Jesus. He himself also said, now people do not remember them so much as we remember Jesus. And when we remember Jesus, we would remember God and we would derive some blessing because Jesus was the Son of God. In the other world, Jesus was God personified on earth. He had to leave us very early. He has his purpose. He wanted to shock us out of our slumber, deep sleep. How many thousand years later, we still shocked if we remember the story because of the ephemeral nature of the uh, existence on earth, that even the Son of God had to die. Everyone must go eventually. Even so great as Jesus, he cannot preserve this ephemeral body. Also, cannot be protected from the violence and ignorance of the people of this world. That means, how would we to feel safe? That's why he humbly submitted himself to the punishment which he did not deserve. He suffered for the sake of everyone. If we say Jesus used his blood to wash away our sin, it's not over saying, it's not exaggerating. It is true. Because every time we think of Jesus, we learn something. At least we remember the ephemeral nature of our world, of our bodies. At least we learn humility. Such a great one had to suffer in such a way because he was so humble. He surrendered himself to God, say whatever God's will be done. Otherwise, he could have escaped. We all know he had a lot of magical power, including the, the power to be invisible, but he chose to obey God's arrangement. So when we think of him, we would say, who are we to be proud? to forget uh, God's will and not to surrender. But these lessons are hard to learn. If only we would learn these well, then Jesus' sacrifice was worthwhile. And we would be worthy uh, disciples of His. Everything is arranged by God for some purpose. Our effort is needed only so that we know we don't need any effort. All the precepts, all the meditation hours I have prescribed to you, all the effort that you put in, only so that finally you learn to use no effort, no human effort, like Jesus was. He had died on the cross just to give us a perfect example of surrender. And if we know this and if we learn this well, we are good Christians. 
uh, during his great mission, short mission, he always preached that lesson. Nothing else. The Bible also always emphasized this. Seek you first the kingdom of God and all the things shall be added unto you. Or um, worry you not for the tomorrow. Take care of today only. Or do not worry what you will eat and what you will clothe. Because look at the lily of the valley. If the Father takes care of the lily of the valley, Is how would he not it? take care of us? Because are we not better than the lilies of the valley? But uh, many people in his time do, did not heed his message. So every year we should celebrate the birthday of Jesus and try our best to remember and also to remind others how to surrender to God. Try to surrender to God. At least try to remember God. God is within us. But if we are too busy thinking of all other things and wanting all other things, then God has no chance to contact us. God has no chance to put his message through, whether through silence in our heart or through a living messenger. I think Jesus sacrificed just to let us know this lesson, that lay you not the treasure uh, on earth, where moths do corrupt and destroy, but lay your treasure in heaven, because it's eternal. Hmm? How do we lay our treasure in heaven? Should we build a safe and put our money inside? No. In heaven, we don't need money. <laughs> Everything is provided in plenty before we ask. So why is it that Jesus said we should uh, I say, lay our treasure in heaven. It means build up our merit. Love God. How to love God? Keep God's commandment. There is only ten. It's very easy. When we compare with uh, so many temptations and difficulties in the world, when we compare to how much obstacles and difficulties and endurance we have to go through in order to preserve a marriage or a job or a, <laughs> a study, yes. And we accept everything in this world. For what purpose? Each one eat about three meals a day and wear just a few clothes. And we work so hard and we endure everything. We keep all the rules of the manufactory <laughs> if we want to keep that job to please the boss. Mm. And what does the boss give us? Not much. And God give us everything if we keep his commandments and we neglect. Only because God is invisible to us and God is so liberal. God doesn't come and <laughs> punch on us every day and say, hey, you don't keep the commandment, you. <laughs> So we don't fear him, as we fear our boss, or maybe our relatives, friends, wives, husband, whatever. Sometimes when we are married and we have a very difficult husband, a very difficult wife, and it give us, give us a lot of trouble, but we bear it because we love that spouse or because we fear that person. But we do not think to fear God and keep his commandments. People ask me, why vegetarian? Because the first commandment, thou shalt not kill. Everything was made by God. We have no right to destroy. If God has not given us permission, which God never had. Because if we remember the Old Testament, God did not give us permission to kill animals. 
He only say rule over them and help them. Uh, they will keep you company. Mm -hmm. And he say he made every all kind of food for each kind of animals. And he also said all the herbs I made, all the herbs in in the field, all the fruits uh, on the trees, which are pleasant to look and good for the taste. These are your food. Never in the Bible I find any sentence say, the animals are your food. Old Testament, New Testament, nothing says that. Like, no, God never say like that. Now Jesus left our world very young. As I told you, because he wants to set good, us a good example, to remind us not, of, uh, not, not to cling to this world, because there are other permanent, more permanent words in the in God's kingdom. Jesus did not refuse to die, did not reject, and did not protest, because he was sure of heaven. He always said, my kingdom is in heaven. Therefore, he said as a perfect example that we should not fear death if we have faith in God, because he said, in my Father's house there are many mansions. Why should we cling to this world all full of misery and short-lived and ephemeral when uh, our Father in heaven has so many mansions? Jesus' death on the cross has so much, so much wonderful meaning, so many wonderful lessons for us. If we think about it, probably we come to more conclusions, more uh, ideas. You see, Jesus was young, very young. He could have had beautiful lovers. He could have enjoyed the world, at least after he was famous, became famous. And so many people loved him. But when he has to go, he just go. He neither feel attached to fame nor love of the people of the world. So how would we, when we have not that much, when we were older than him, or maybe not as good looking as he, not as wise as he, not as loved as he, not as respected and sought after as he. He had traveled wide all over the world, over ten years, and he learned so many things. He has so much magic powers. He could achieve anything he wants, even turn white in, uh, water into wine. How would we labor in all day long just for a little bit of fruit juice? And we don't want to let go of this world. So Jesus had to make an example, even though silently, si through silence, sacrifice. That's why we remember him. That's why people till now still shed tears over him, including myself sometimes, even recently. When, when I read the Bibles, sometimes I read again and again. When I read of how, how they treated him, oh, I was so hurt, so I suffer so much. And once I, I was alone in my room and I cry very loud. <laughs> I keep calling his name and cry very loud. Of course, I understand it's all God's will too. And I understand uh, he has his purpose. But because we, we have human's body, human's heart, so we cannot help sometimes to have this human's emotion. So the best thing we can do to show our gratitude to Jesus. It's just that is we, uh, we try es to live according to what Jesus is teaching <laughs> and try to keep God's commandments because he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's all he wanted. And keep the commandments is not good for God and not God good good for Jesus is good for us alone. God needs nothing from us, Jesus needs nothing from us. But God knows, Jesus knows that if we keep the commandments, our word would become better and we will be more benefited, more peaceful, more happy. He wanted that even in our short stay on earth, we enjoy our bliss and comfort and glorify ourselves. Instead of suffering 
and being miserable most of the time of our life. That's all. But because we couldn't keep it sometimes, because we feel God is far away, so we neglect the uh, commandments of God, and then we encounter disaster. Then we suffer, we cry. Then we pray to God. So now God had to send a messenger down again, maybe in different names, to remind us, to uh, teach us again the, the way of happiness. Hmm. You see, Jesus also say, I will send, God will send comforters to us. That means the same spirit will descend in different bodies. When, whenever hum, humanity needs comfort and needs, uh, uh, how to say, uh, correction in the way of life. Anyone teaches the same as Jesus or give us the same comfort as Jesus did, as stated in the Bible, then we should know that this is the comforter that Jesus sent to us. We may search and we may choose any of these. If there should be so many, one is enough. If you do not uh, think there is such a messenger, comforter, then we must also at least keep God's commandment and think and pray to God all the time. Otherwise, the grace of Jesus will not descend on us, and His sacrifice would have been a waste to us, and we have no gratitude to Him. Now we say Jesus has come here and he has washed our sin. So what is the need to repent or to think of pray anymore? But we must still do it. Knock and it shall be opened, ask and it shall be given. We must knock, we must ask. Otherwise God will say, don't bother to knock, don't bother to ask. <laughs> I give to you anyway. But he did, he did in the Garden of Eden. But we human did not appreciate it. So he sent us down here to learn through hardship. So now we should learn fast and go back to Eden. Now we must ask, we must knock. It's not given freely anymore. And how come so many still suffer? Must be something lacking. Maybe we were not sincere enough. Maybe we do not understand properly. Maybe we were not connected inside. Because we have not found the kingdom of God within. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you. Now, if we don't find a way to find out where it is, then we cannot receive the grace of Jesus. Just like our Father left a big treasure for us, but we don't know the key, we don't know where it is. It doesn't matter how many times we say, oh, I have treasure, I have treasure, I have treasure, it's no use. So if we can find it ourselves, then it's good. If we do not, we should ask. We should ask anyone who knows. Ask until we find out the one who knows. We should knock every door. Knock until we find the right door. The door which opened the gate to heaven. La open puerta. the way to heaven. Otherwise, our life very short and very ephemeral and is always in danger. We have nothing to lean on. Okay, I don't speak too much. <laughs> that you... Uh, probably rest or go home or enjoy further. Feliz, Feliz Navidad. Yes, that I know. Agradecemos su alegre compañía en el episodio de hoy de la historia de la Navidad y el amor de Jesús, parte 2 de 2, en palabras de sabiduría. <música>